happy to present indeed the link to, between uh, STEM and, and football. Um, before I will start to talk about our STEM uh, part of my presentation, I want to give you some insight about uh, the social power of football and, and, and what EFDN and our organization is doing. Um, our belief is based on uh, one of the most famous quiz, uh, quotes of Nelson Mandela, that sport has the power to change the world and it has the power to reach people that um, and, and speaks to youth in a, in a way that uh, little other um, uh, things can, can do. Um, and we use that social power on an everyday um, in, in various programs. EFDN is a, a network, the European Football for Development Network, is a network of more than 160 professional football clubs, leagues and FAs within the UEFA territory from 32 countries. Everything from a third division club uh, in Scotland to um, the most famous clubs in the world like Juventus or Inter Milan, Barcelona and so on. And, and what we all have in common is that we use football as a tool for social development in various programs and also that we want to make the football sector um, a bit better uh, and more uh, sustainable as well. Um, our belief in that is that when we are um, sustainable organizations, not only uh, environmental sustainable, but also um, on governance and financial, that we will create a better football sector, but also that we we can give something really special back to the world. Uh, that's what we do on a daily basis with all these clubs. And we focus on seven main uh, topics. That's health and education and employability, social inclusion and cohesion, sustainability, um, environmental sustainability and good governance. Um, in total, we run more than 30 uh, programs funded either through the European Commission or the UEFA Foundation or other fund giving organizations. And for us, it's important that all these programs are lining up with the sustainable development goals, um, including um, equality uh, in quality education, uh, but also in, in equal opportunities for, for everyone. Um, how does football clubs and professional football clubs especially uh, do this? Well, we, we work together what we call in a more than football network. So the professional football organizations work together with a variety of organizations like um, welfare organizations, uh, civil society organizations, but also, especially um, also schools, primary schools, secondary schools, universities. Um, most of the time, the primary schools and secondary schools, we work together with uh, on a delivery scale where we run programs to teach young, uh, young people about health, a healthy nutrition, a healthy lifestyle, uh, but also on employability skills. And our uh, STEM education program is, is a part of that. The way we work with universities is for our monitoring, evaluation and learning part of it. So how do we measure our impact um, about all the programs that we run um, and, and do the efforts and time that we are investing in that together? Is that really changing life uh, through football, as we always say? So what... So to do that, one of our programs is the STEM and football program, and we created a STEM network. So our STEM network is a network of EFDN members, so that's the football clubs, leagues, and FAs, but also STEM organizations and, and commercial companies that have an importance or have an interest in STEM. Uh, we promote STEM through uh, our European football community, uh, and we hope that something, some, something that can perhaps look a bit boring for some people that we can make it interesting through football. And one of the uh, ways we do that is through robot football, like you see on the photos here. So the robot football is a, is a, a ball that is created by one of our partners that you can, uh, that you can steer uh, through coding, Lego blocks of coding, um, and that you can do, well, you can make it change color, you can do, let it um, go any direction that you want, and you can actually make a competition out of it by um, seeing who is fastest in coding, and that and that and that's how you can play and, and score um, football. So why are we interested in as, as football organizations in, in STEM and in STEM network? Uh, well, as you all know, I'm, I'm practicing a, a bit to, to the choir here, but um, there's a, an, a, an increasing demand for STEM jobs um, all around the world. Um, and there's an interest in schools to deliver uh, to improve the quality and the delivery of STEM education. Um, also true in innovative ways like football can be and, and can do. Um, so 
But um, we wanted to, so we started with just one ID, which is the robot, the robot football, uh, and we are now uh, working together with the last group of organizations to, uh, as a breeding ground for for new IDs uh, and corporations, and basically start a movement through football and football organizations and their sponsors um, all across Europe. So some facts um, on stats uh, in in that sense. Um, and this is UK data, so it will be a lot bigger for uh, um, Europe. But hopefully, we can we can um, yeah, it's it's transferable as well. Um, so only in the UK alone, uh, there's an interest for 1.2 million engineers that are not there yet, and um, by 2023, which is already next year. Um, also interesting, especially from a football perspective, 11 percent is, is is female. Uh, of the engineers are female, and with the growing interest of women in the football, um, um, that could be a, a major opportunity for us as well. Um, and research amongst sponsors of our um, our football clubs has shown that 53% of the companies believe that they should be more involved in schools and um, uh, to to create the the, uh, the employees of the of the future. Um, so. You have STEM careers, but you also have STEM careers in football. So, uh, of course, you can think of becoming an aerospace engineer or computer programmer. But also in football, the head of groundsman, uh, the web designer, the match analyst, uh, analyst, or the social media manager is all linked to to football. So, also from a football perspective and from a football club perspective, it's important that kids are uh, inspired to to um, to grow uh, in STEM in STEM skills. So what are the objectives of our, of our network? Uh, so we, we would, are uh, scheduling to come together two times a year, uh, physically or digital, uh, with all these organizations that have an interest in, and are um, um, willing to contribute to, to the STEM development of, and the STEM link between FIPPO and STEM um, and create the new ways of delivering for our STEM programs um, and, and build new alliances Perhaps in every country of our network, the 32, and that that number is growing every every week. Uh, but also to see if we can, uh, uh, yeah, create um, and use the social power and act, um, the communication power of football um, to promote STEM in society. Uh, to give you some examples, the um, global reach of just one of our members, Juventus, is about seven and a half million on one social media channel alone. Um, so you can imagine how much the reach is in the total of our of our network. And the figure from last year is that that, that we can reach with the social media um, channels of the whole of our network is over 400 million people um, all around the world. So what have we done uh, until now? We uh, ho we hosted our first STEM network conference um, at Chelsea FC because they were run one of the front runners in uh, their program Digital Blue um, with a small group of people that are really the pioneers within our network. We created a, a partnership with Sphero Sports, which is a US-based company that develops a, um, that developed the robot football and and that we are now working together with to or um, to to. Um, organize and, and to develop different curricula. Uh, but we also created a, a STEM practitioner's guide for football clubs. So if they want to start, uh, where can they begin? What are the challenges? What are the opportunities? And, and how can they organize uh, uh, things like that? Um, it cr creates a bit a starting foundation to create their own project plan uh, to start with these activities. Um, and also we secure funding for our STEM and football education program. So next to the um, football and education program, which I tell you, will tell you a bit more about in, in a minute, um, we have other initiatives that are carried out by our members themselves as well. So we work together with the robot balls that you can use in different ways because one of the clubs developed to use instead the ball as a football, they developed the uh, thriller ball as, a, as the motor of, uh, of puppets that they made themselves. And at that in that way, they used 11 uh, or 10 different ro robots uh, where they play uh, five-a-side robot football uh, with a ping-pong ball. So in, instead of using the, the robot ball as the football, they developed the ball as an engine uh, for um, uh, different type of robots. Uh, but um, 
there's also an example from PSV in Eindhoven in the Netherlands where they work together with uh, the Brainport area. And I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with that, but the biggest companies um, in, in the world in this in this area, like ASML, Philips and so on, are all centered across Eindhoven. Um, and they are really interested to work together and develop curricula um, on this next to what we do. So. Um, to give you a couple of examples, what you can do with STEM and football. So one is um, the robot football, which I will show you a video about. But you can also think of CAD design programs, how to develop a stadium or how to design a stadium, how to develop boots for football. Uh, and how, you can, how can you make boots that are where people become be better football players of than perhaps they actually are. But also in, in things about uh, colorblind awareness in, in, in football um, as well. One in 12 men is colorblind. So uh, STEM and, 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 and uh, awareness of that are using um, um, design to make football more accessible is all related to, to STEM, STEM education and, and where you can find the link between the two. Because basically everything that you can do in a stadium, you can link and use um, also in STEM education um, and link it to FIPO. Some other things that we're doing is actually building uh, study support centers inside of stadiums. So this is the example of NAC Breda, uh, where there is a classroom inside the stadium. Well, actually they have multiple classrooms and this is the classroom that looks like the football stadium itself. So it has photos of all the terraces around all the, um, the the terraces in the stadium. You have artificial grass on 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 the on the um, on the floor. They have stadium lamps, and um, they're using computers, uh, music, and um, for uh, to to teach kids everything about STEM, uh, but also to build self confidence. So our STEM and football program is a, a twelve uh, or ten week module that is given um, um, at this, either at the stadium or we, we go to um, schools itself, on primary schools uh, from kids from nine to 12 years old. Um, it's delivered by the football club foundations uh, in partnership with the, the schools and with the uh, teachers. Um, and it's supported by local and global companies. And um, I will have... Yeah, so this is uh, our ob objectives until now. So we run the programs for the program for the last two and a half years, which of course was a big challenge to uh, COVID. Uh, but then we we started uh, digital. But in the last year, where uh, COVID restrictions have been lifted, we have reached about four thousand eight hundred participants all around Europe. So this program is now delivered uh, within the UK, but also um, in. Um, Poland uh, with our partner Legia Warsaw and even still in in without with all challenges there by Shakhtar Donetsk in uh, Ukraine so in the western part of Ukraine uh, kids are still playing uh, actually football and robot football uh, thanks to our partner well as well um, and just earlier this week we disseminated uh, this program to over 150 clubs leagues and FAs at the EFDN conference which was organized this earlier this week in, in Budapest um, so for us, the um, the feedback there was really positive, and we expect that a lot of clubs will uh, start with this in the future. To give you a more wider idea, I will show you um, a, a short video. Robots, football, kids, what else can you have? It's fun at the same time as well as learning. We've just spent absolutely ages playing, but in amongst there, we're learning, and that I think is the important thing. What have you enjoyed today? The robots. Yeah, robots. The robots are just good. I like pattering everyone. Yeah. Children love football. I think it's as simple as that. Therefore, if you can link anything to football, they'll want to take part in it. They want to learn about it, and they want to aspire to be part of it in some way. Active learning plays a real important part in a child's education platform. Being hands-on, playing with the robots, using the devices, really understanding the coding, um, trying to make sure how that links in with education is just a new way that, that children can interact. And, and we've seen that today. They absolutely love it. So we've got the Spiro Bulk Power Pack, which includes 15 robots. We've got six personalised mats training for staff. And as well as that, we've got the curriculum package that helps us um, deliver the programme within schools. It's an innovative programme, it's at the heartbeat of, of modern education, combining um, science and technology and, and engineering, maths and football. So we would absolutely endorse everything that they've done. 
what I've learned is actually coding isn't as scary as a lot of people think it is. Really simple to use. I've got coding. I put in a few instructions, very hands on. And we find within a few minutes, young people are coding straight away. It's really fun to just like be able to control a robot. Yeah, I really enjoy it. They're really, really fun. They're good. They're, they're like good learning as well. They just keep going. I can't, you can't stop them. I think that's the point is that, you know, you hear the good old fashioned groan at the end of, oh, as we have to say, right, we're finished, we're going to stop. You know, they run out of battery, they run out of time, you know, and that's the, the robots, not the children. Um, they need recharging. So, yeah, the engagement is brilliant. Well, it, it, feel like it feels like learning, but fun learning. Like, fun learning. Fun learning. That's what Sphero is to me, fun learning. Yeah, so I hope that that gave um, a bit, bit of an overview of how that looks. And indeed, so what I uh, earlier said is not only something that happens in the in the UK, but the two photos on this slide shows um, on the top uh, left the the map of uh, of Legia Warsaw because you can see their crest in in the map. That's also how all these maps are personalized. So it actually becomes a a program that is of Legia Warsaw or Shakhtar Donetsk or or any other club. Uh, within our network um, and you can bring it to other sports as well so what are we trying to do is uh, do our bit as football clubs as football organizations to add to um, uh, the the interest in the um, uh, the, the the results that schools want to 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 reach um, and providing help with that and bringing our brands and and sometimes even players to that classroom um, so I'm not sure how I'm in time, but I um, can finish yeah. with an, either just another video or um, ask, ask uh, answer any of your questions. Yes, several minutes we have. Yeah. Okay, then I will show you just another video as well because the first robot okay. was, um, we've de we further developed that, uh, and it now actually looks even more like like football. Boom, 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 boom,